Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Board of City Rock Talker. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you smash the subscribe button and hit the like button as well. Before further ado, I bring to you Seven from Hollywood Gods and Monsters. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing good. I'm doing good in the hood here in Phoenix. A little hot, but it's okay. Yeah, well, I, I understand. It's definitely always hot in Phoenix, but um, you're in the tour bus right now. You live in the Life 365? Yes, yes, yes. I uh, I live on my bus, and um, I thought it was going to be very temporary. It's been almost five months. Mm -hmm. uh, just needed to recoup some losses from a past relationship. Um, I'm pretty much digging it. I learned that you can live on much less. And I've never been a bougie. I need a fancy big house or any of that. But it's really it's really comforting and it's really cozy. Uh, I'll give you a little tour later. Yeah. What, what's uh, what, what what size is that bus? Like that's not no um, that's not a uh, yellow school bus like that's a coach. We call it we call it our, our bus because, you know, the band thing and all. But it's actually a, a 38 foot um, Southwind RV and it sleeps eight. Um, you'd see I've got a nice recliner, a massage recliner. Uh, I've got a nice couch, uh, nice eating area that I'm sitting in, full kitchen, beautiful bathroom. I can take showers and everything. And then the very back, I have my bed and I just curl up back there like a caterpillar and it's just so cozy. And I keep my gun right next to me just in case, but it's been good. Do you have your FAC or in Canada it's called a firearm certificate? Do you have your, do you have a gun? Yeah, here you can carry a, a weapon as long as it's concealed without a permit. Without a permit? Yeah. Holy jeez. Yeah. Uh, some of my friends, I wouldn't, uh, I would tell you before I'd let them to move to Arizona. I wouldn't let them carry a rock. It's like tombstone here. You'd be surprised. I, a lot of people, you know, walk around with their guns on their holsters and everything. But for me, I mean, I don't need to. I just, I, I, I was talking to a police officer the other day and, and he said, you know, some of the areas are sketchy and carry it on. You just keep it in your purse. But I just really keep it on the bus with me just in case anyone ever tried to break in. Yeah, and I watch a lot of Dateline, too, so there's a lot of crime going down in Arizona, Chris. I know. There <laughs> is. Stay away from me, please. <laughs> so what's new with uh, the band? Like, um, um, when I first heard about it, it was obviously because of um, Lexi or Travis Haley, um, but he's not in the band, obviously. He's raising his, uh, his, uh, his, it's a daughter, right? He has a daughter. Yeah, beautiful little girl. How, his how's wife, he doing? Yeah. You know, he is, he went from one extreme of Still Panther to another, and he needed it. And uh, he's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known in my whole life. I've known him for, uh, God, probably 30 years. And um, he's just always been the salt of the earth guy. And, and you know, he gave Still Panther every bit of himself. And it wears those guys out. You know, it's a hard life. It's, it's not as glamorous as everybody says it is being in a band. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. And um, it was just time for him to, you know, make that transition. And I think a lot of people thought that he left Still Panther to join our band, but that wasn't true. Um, mm -hmm. It was just serendipity that he just happened to quit Still Panther. And then I and and Dave saw that he was up for grabs and Dave's like, don't call him yet. And I'm like, okay. And then Dave left and I'm like, do, 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 do. And I called Travis <laughs> and I told him about our band and stuff. And, um, you know, it, it, he thought it would, it would work. And uh, he was really excited about it. And he was there with us right from the get go, right out mm -hmm. the gate. It was, like I said, it was serendipity how he left and we were starting, but, um, you know, he just decided that it was time for his family. and Good for him. Yeah. I mean, it's a really great story. Um, there's nothing anim animosity about anything. Him and Ralph still talk all the time. Right. Um, it was just, you know, sometimes it's time to close one chapter and start another one. You can get burnt out. You can just get... Well, I think some musicians, you know, when they reach that place where it's just not fun for them anymore and uh, it's just a chore... You know, yeah. I applaud those those musicians that go, it's either time to take a permanent break or it's time to just take a break. And then maybe later down the road, I'll come back again. 
Yeah, I mean, there's other instances of that, like Queensryche, like one of their best guitar players, Chris DeGarmo, he left the band oh, yeah. to pursue, you know, he's a, he's a pilot. Yeah. I mean, so anyways, so what's happening with the band? The band's still going. I know that um, um, Dave's not in the band and I think Hype's not in the band. So who who do you have in the band and what, what are your plans now? So we had to make some changes. <clears throat> They're very positive ones, and we knew it was going to be a long haul uh, piecing it back together. But um, there was that, and then we found Tony Noyes, who's our new lead singer, who is amazing. And he's funny, as all get out. We're always in hysterics together. It's almost like the um, toxicity is no longer in the band. And now, because it was, it was really hard going on the road, because... Mm-hmm. There, there are people that pit everyone against each other. And we were just, um, you could cut the tension with a knife. If we would go to Texas for touring, we're all on the bus together. It was just uh, very awkward and it was not fun. And now we're all laughing together. We're, we're having dinners together. We're planning together. And the most important thing is all the things that's been thrown at us. Like we lost our sound man. Uh, he bailed on us at the last minute and no explanation no nothing and this this is a guy that i've had to every single one of my holiday dinners he was like a brother to me like Mm -hmm. he just ghosted us so it was like every time we would turn around and think we got this we're going to get it together uh we would just get hit with something else but instead of hurting us it just ended up helping us because we all bonded together and now we we're more of a family than we've ever been uh, we laughed together. We've gotten through this together. We had to go and, and piece tracks. Here, someone had this. Here, someone had that. Danny Parker is one of our old drummers uh, who had to leave the band for you know his own reasons. But mm-hmm. you know he came in like Superman. He had a lot of the tracks that we needed. And now we've got a show Friday the twenty second at Dylan's at Lake Pleasant here in uh, Phoenix. Okay. And because everybody just bonded together and worked on it, we made it happen with all things thrown against us we're playing this friday and we're going to rehearse tonight we're rehearsing again tomorrow but we're going to be ready and we're really excited how many uh how many tracks are uh in the set list uh do you anticipate so right now we've got 15 songs and we are working on nine new ones that i've already did all the vocals on and brian's already done all the guitar on um and uh it just sounds really good yeah it's 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 gonna be amazing it's gonna have a whole new twist to it a lot of disco um a little bit more country okay definitely rock right on so um with the genre of music for the first uh, time viewers coming to this interview it's uh what you guys used to call smash up it, it, just to kind of describe the sound it's a melding of so- so a lot of DJs will, um, I think DJ Schmally is one of the ones that I love the most. And, and I just right here, right now, for the whole band, want to say that um, we owe DJ Schmally a big, I'm sorry, because we had no idea that a lot of the um, smash shops that we were doing were being plagiarized and um, being taken credit for when the credit wasn't theirs to take. Okay. And there's actually an interview that you, you can see. I think it's on Blabbermouth or somewhere where DJ Schmally, um, we found after the fact that he was upset that, that we took a song and didn't, didn't give him credit, did not give him credit for it. And we honestly didn't know the person that's responsible is gone. And okay. so now when we go on stage, we're going to give credit to DJ Smalley because we open up with his song, Rock of Ages. And every song that we do, we will we will give credit to the artist that it goes to but we're a D- live dj dance band a lot of our old a lot of the songs that we did our old band band member did he did uh mash those up and we're going to give credit to him as well but a mm. mashup is normally like two maybe three songs we call it smash up because it's more like eight to ten to 15 songs going all at the same time right maybe just little bits and pieces here and there but it, it makes it really interesting. I think DJ Schmally is the one that I could, if anybody wants to see, go watch Rock of Ages by DJ Schmally. It's it's genius. It's amazing. There's ACDC, really there's Joe Jet. Yeah, that's really big of you because we talked recently and um, you told me that. So no, I think, um, I, I know 
in my heart of heart that he's going to be very probably surprised because people don't usually make a public apology when there's something goes wrong in the entertainment industry. They, they try to, you know, um, evade it. So, um, yeah, that's that's really great of you, Chris, for doing that. Um, just for the viewers, the, the video seems to be um, um, sometimes freezing. It's probably because you're in your unfrozen tour bus, the reception for the yeah. Wi-Fi. So just uh, letting everybody know. So who's in the band? You've got Rachel, you've got Dan, or Rachel, Brian. Um, I couldn't hear the first name of your your the the singer rapper. So all along it's been Rachel Brian and I, and um, Endicut replaced Hype. His name is Endica Endicut. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's been he's been on this for a little while now, and then we got a new drummer. His name's Arturo, and uh, he's played in front of multi multi thousands of people because he's done tours with um, the Selena tribute. Oh, really? Selena Selena that was killed, the Spanish singer. Oh, Selena Gomez. Is that her? Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, Selena. Yeah, she was shot and killed. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. It wasn't Selena Gomez, but yeah, she I was a very... I can't remember her last name either. I feel bad. Yeah, but she's, he... she's a Mexican star, wasn't she? Yes, yes. Okay. So she was murdered. And so there is a tribute to her. Um, and he's played on that tribute. And he's shown us the footage. It was like 40,000 people in the crowd outside. It's just ridiculous. And that whole... Um, Hispanic um, music just draws a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And so he's played in front of like huge, huge crowds. And he he's actually, <laughs> so in the studio where we practice, he was about seven doors down from us, right? And he had his own studio and he'd be in there practicing. He would hear us practicing, rehearsing in our studio. And he said, and I would leave and I'd, I'd walk down and he goes, and I would stand outside the door. And I would listen to you guys rehearse. She'd be like, God, I want to join that band. God, I want to join that band. And so when we lost uh, Danny, um, we uh, we were uh, looking for new drummers. So we were auditioning new drummers. And a guy that he knew named uh, Matt came in for an audition. He's like, what are you doing here, man? He's like, I'm here for an audition for Hollywood Gods and Monsters. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, they're auditioning drummers for Hollywood Gods and Monsters. So Arturo was like, mm -mm, man, you need to keep walking. That gig's mine. <laughs> wow, that's confident. That. He didn't say that. Of, oh, he's amazing. He didn't say that, of course, to Matt. But he he got with us right away. And he goes, I want to audition for this band. And I want to audition right now. And we were like, because we knew him because we were all in the same studio complex together. And we're like, right. all right. And he got with us and just, he is amazing. Amazing. Wow. Um, and he fit right in just the nicest guy, just the best heart guy. And that means a lot to us. Great musicianship is, is a, is a must, but you got to have the heart. We all have to gel together. I will never be in another band again where it's like walking on eggshells around everybody. Well, that, that's the thing, right? Successful people tend to attract other successful people. Like I just talked to Rudy Sarzo and, Jeff Pilson and everybody loves those people. And then you kind of wonder why, well, it makes sense why they're in 38 bands because everybody's pulling at them because they're good people, yeah. right? Exactly. Your attitude does a lot more than just your ability to play. And, you know, I, I took, I, um, from Diggs and I, Dave, Diggity Dave Aragon, we started this band together. Um, but the band is in my name and mm -hmm. I bought the bus. I own the contract. I own the LLC. I own all the rights to the music. So if anybody hears anything about, I stole the band from him, that's not true. I've got the paperwork to prove it. And him and I had a definite understanding when, um, he left the band of, uh, our agreement of how things were going to work out. So my band, I own it. And, um, and that's just well, the way it shows your character, Chris, because when I first interviewed you guys both times, it appeared that, um, and, I, and I don't want to be dissing anyone because I don't know Dave. I just know him from talking to you guys. Um, but it appeared like he was kind of running everything, but you were very humble in letting that happen. Probably because he's got, he, he had the, he had the, um, 
the um, entertainment industry um, experience, let's say. And I do not. <laughs> so, so I'm saying it was very gracious of you doing all that behind the scenes and not taking credit for it. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, he was a big, I mean, the biggest part of the band because he was the one that put together the, the mashups, mashups, the ones he took credit for and the ones he didn't take credit for. Mm -hmm. um, none of us really knew what this was. I mean, the reason why I talked him into starting this band or putting these together was because he said that he was in London with Tommy Lee and Boy George and Boy George was doing these, um, these smash ups, smash ups, because Boy George is a DJ now. And that was the first time we heard that. about it. And that was back in the, um, you know, 2010 area, right around there. And so he showed me a couple on um, online. Like there's one that we do too, that is uh, David Lee Roth and the Jackson Five. And we call it Mean Street Thrift Machine, but that was done by another DJ. And that's the one that I did know that that he added to. Um, okay. But uh, he showed me that and I was like, let's do a live band with that. And he goes, oh, that can't be done. I'm like, come on, you're a smart guy. You can do this. That's one of my favorite ones that you guys have. Yeah, Probably that was I'm, really I'm a Van Halen fan, right? So. Yeah, I think it was just the um, the the um, Jackson Five and Van Halen, and then like he added Foo Fighters and some other stuff to it as well. well so um, legally, you know, we can want uh, we're we're a live DJ dance cover band if you want to genreize it, but um, but I, we can cover anything we want, but we can never sell our music. And did I just you, think it's very just, important that we. Did you just make up a word? Genreizing. Genre it. I like it. I think I did. I think so. Patent penning. I got it. Okay. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Genreizing. Huh? The shit that comes. Well, out you know, what? it's like one of those words. Like the last ten years, people say, "Oh, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do this, and then I'll go adulting on the weekend." <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm I'm raising my adult kids on, on the adulting. weekend. You can adult during the week. You go yeah. non-adult. Is that what it is? Non-adulting on the weekend. Well, I, yeah, I, I mixed up the timeline, but I'm saying the word adulting is something that just came out, and it's like that makes sense. It's like, like kind that. of a slang. Yeah, I like that. You yeah. never heard of adulting? Like trying to be an adult, like yeah, acting but like I mean, an doing adult. Doing things that you're supposed to do as a parent. <laughs> I'm adulting today, so I can't. Sometimes go we tonight. have to adult ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. By the way, how's your uh, your young man? Oh my god, I got two. Mm. Your young so man, Austin, is oh my god, going to be sixteen on June twenty fifth, and he's getting ready to drive. Oh my lord, help me. Um, is he getting his bus license? No, hell no. I'm the only one that drives this bus. You driving that oh. sucker? Wow, you know I drive it. Mm -hmm. What are you? What are you? Four foot two? How can you reach those pedals? Honey, I'm five foot six. Thank you very much. And I oh, don't say okay. if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, and I do what I want. If I want to drive a bus, I'm gonna drive a bus. I'm not saying you can't drive a bus. I'm just kind of teasing you. So. Oh, I know. No, I, I mean it was. Uh, I grew up in the South, driving my dad's big old Volkswagen VW bus. So I learned how to drive a stick before I ever drove really? anything I was probably like 14 so Chris fell off the map everybody <clears throat> you're gonna have to uh hit the video thing up my dad's uh vw van when i okay. was uh i started like i was like 13 driving that thing you know that one that comes out of the ground and it's like three feet long and you're in the mm -hmm. bus going, rrr, rrr, rrr. i was like hey, there's a song what is it i mean that's a country song <laughs> that's cool so yeah so you're a georgia girl um 
was there any thought in changing the name of of the band? Because I gotta I gotta be honest, whoever came up with that name doesn't matter who, but I mean that's a really cool name, Hollywood Gods and Monsters. Although I said it should be Hollywood Gods and Goddesses and Monsters. Remember that? I do. I love you, Ernest. Anyway. No, that's that's Diggity Dave Aragon. He has he's got such a creative um imagination. He really does. He's you know, he's uh He's just very, very creative. He comes up with some great things. He really does. And he did come up with the name Hollywood Gods and Monsters. Um, but like I said, I own the name um, LLC legally. Uh, and he agreed to that. So it was an agreement that we made together. So um, um, he's got some really good other names, too. Like, you look really? for a name of your hit him up, man, because he's really Well, be that. before you guys decided on that name, uh, a lot of your fans might be interested in knowing what other names were in the... Um, in the catalog of names you're going to pick from? Mm, I would say, but I, I don't, I can't really, because okay. I have no idea if he's planning on, if I say oh, a name okay. that, yeah, they're, they're kind of his creation. So. What about Lady Chris? <laughs> Shut up. God, you're so funny. Uh, I'm a dork. <laughs> That's, Gaga's already got that name and I can't, I. I no, I can't she's got Lady Gaga. <laughs> I know, I mind. What's that? I said no, she doesn't have that. She has Lady Gaga. I Anyways, know. You're, you're probably well, more Lady Antebellum. Than... I think the lady yeah. thing is taking its course. I'd have to come lady... up with something. Else. I remember you know what? I'm not a big country fan per se, but I remember Lady Antebellum. They had a great song. They probably have a bunch of them. I just don't know them, but I remember that band for sure. So um you have a show coming up coming up at Dylan's this Friday. Yep. Okay, and so who's uh, who's managing this? For you Dylan's right now? You doing... uh, uh, Dylan's this Friday at Lake Pleasant, fun spot, lots of houseboats, lots of partying going on. The place where we play, uh, all these houseboats are parked, and the whole windows retract onto the lake, and then everybody's just jumping from houseboat to houseboat, just partying their asses off. Oh wow! And then so there's a nice harbor? big stage inside, but it's all ages. So this is like in yeah, the, the uh, no, uh, uh, no, it's a man-made lake called Lake Pleasant. Wow, it's um further out west. It's it's the frozen amazing barbecue and nice big stage. Um, we always have a good time playing there, so we're excited. That's where we're gonna debut our whole new lineup. We got Tony singing, myself. Brian on guitar, Rachel, Indy, Indicut, and um, Arturo on the drums. And like I said, we're thick as thieves. Uh, we're really excited. We've been working really hard. We had a lot of obstacles trying to keep us from going forward, but we smashed them because that's what we do. We smash it. That's awesome. So now speaking of um, touring, um, who's managing right now? Are you doing primarily the managing do you have a team right now assembled um and any shows um that you're about to ink that you can't talk about or no we have some we've got about seven shows in the uh, next um couple of months and then we uh definitely are going to be touring utah uh texas we have a, a long run going on in texas we love texas man they're so good to us over there um and we have major hookups for Las Vegas, which I'm really excited about. And also um, looking forward, uh, going back and forth a little bit with uh, the Canyon Club and our, and um, um, oh, I can't think of it right now. Uh, Agora is that, Hills. Is that in California? Yeah, it's in Agora Hills. Yeah, they've got That's like right, four Agora. clubs. And I'm like praying. I'm like, please, please, please. We opened up for a band there called Fast Times. And... It was such an amazing time because these guys, you know, they do they do covers, but the lead singer looks just like Spicoli from Fast would, Times at Ridgemont High. I swear to God, we think, I, I swear to God, I'm always like, I want to say this, but I'll wait till my guest uh, finishes his or her sentence. And as soon as she says Fast Times, I'm thinking of Ridgemont High. And I was going to say, is the singer like Spicoli, like Sean Penn? Yeah. Looks just like him. Looks just like him. He's like, hey, what's up, dudes? <laughs> You know what somebody's got to do? Like, yeah. You know what you got to like do? That. 
Next time What's you that? guys, um, what are you going to do the next time you guys play together? Somebody order a pizza while he's singing and have the pizza delivery guy bring it up Mr. to him. Mr. Hand, why yeah. can't we learn and have pizza at the same time? Isn't it your time and my time? It's our time. It's our time. And then he That's... calls him a dick. You're a dick. Oh, man, part. you're you're amazing. I, I can't believe you uh, know that movie better than I do. Um, speaking of funny movies, actually... Spinal Tap's coming out, I think, this month. What? Like you a new one? You, you, I yeah, love Spinal you, Tap, but like a you, new yeah. one, like one thousand percent. It's been in the. It's been in the the the. They've been working on it for about a year and a half, and it's coming out, I think, sometime in March. And it's got everybody, like the three main guys: Harry Shearer, Christopher Guest, Michael McKeon, oh, and Bob yeah. Ryan is directing it. And so oh, here's a, is. oh my god. Yeah. And so the premise is this is that um Ian, the manager, he had died, and in his will and testament, they didn't fulfill one last show of their contract. So they have to get together and reform for one last show, and that's the premise of the movie. Oh my god. Is it gonna be English still? Uh, like in the, the English accent, or is it gonna you be? No, what accent? good point. I don't um, I, I would think if they want to make a movie that's semi a sequel, they should do it. And if they come back speaking Canadian, they would be like, what? That's just stupid. I know. I, I feel like it's got to stay in the in the English accent yeah. for sure. Yeah, I know it will. But I mean, um, people are always saying to me like, oh, man, that's don't do it. Don't do it. But there are some movies that can have a, a sequel like the uh, Mike Myers with the awesome power stuff. He did two, two or three of those that were great. But I don't know with these these actors. I think it's they're gonna make this one pretty good too. So, you know, they should bring back Monty Python. That was See, some good never, stuff. I never got into Monty Python. Oh, you should. I got it's into really Benny good. Hill. They chop his arm off. They chop his other arm off. Then they chop his leg off. And then he's a stump, and he's still fighting. He's going, "Come back, yeah! I'll bite your bloody nose off." <laughs> your bloody you nose watch off. No, I got into Benny Hill. I never got into Monty Python, but oh, Benny yeah. Hill was great too. Hey, did you ever see that? Um, it was a more recent one called The IT Crowd. No, you've got to look that up. It is the funniest shit I, I've ever seen. Like you'd recognize some of the actors in it because they've gone on to do other things. But basically, they're the IT crowd in the basement of this huge corporation. And it go and it goes through like their day to day life and what they have to deal with. And it's always, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? And it's just hilarious. You got to check it out. I, I I I tell everyone out there, IT crowd, check it out. You're gonna love it. Oh, okay. Where am I getting a phone call from? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. So, can we get a, uh, a tour of the bus? Well, sure. God, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose you again because my freaking phone died. That's okay. Oh, oh, you're on your phone again. It should be charged a bit. I'll make it quick. Okay. Oh, okay, so this is my eating area and my computer work area. Wow. This is my sofa. This is the driving area. You sit there and push that sucker around. Holy God. I drive. I drive. It's like a Bad is that is that garbage bag beside the steering wheel? Is that for when you get sick? No, that's just for my trash. I was I was supposed to move that before I showed you this, but oh well. I get to see okay. my trash. Yay! This is my kitchen. Nice. And I had to because these are our sponsors. Show oh yeah. Here's me. That's coming out. Five flavors CBD. More CBD than any other thing. Nano emulsified. I told Kelly I would definitely show that on this interview because that is awesome. We're going Shout back. out to CBD. This is where I slumber. Oh. That's the teddy bear my son got me when we went to um I, I thought you said you weren't dating again. Just my sons. No, I, I mean the teddy sons. bear. I mean the teddy bear. We there's this <laughs> new Japanese arcade in uh Lindale, and it is so much fun so wow i did that on the we did that on that pool thing where the clock comes down yeah this is my bathroom if i don't fall down 
my shower. I put shit in my shower until after shower. So, <laughs> but right I don't on. put shit in my shitter until after shit. That okay, was... well, that's I love. I love your honesty. Gotta throw that in there. Yeah. 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 And so then that is awesome. I'll show that's... you the outside real quick. Okay. In case nobody's ever seen it. Oh yeah, for sure. The whoever did the decals on that bus was amazing, right? Wow. The outside, yeah. I'm gonna have to get it rewrapped, though. You, you know what I was just gonna say? It's because... probably not cheap to get that to retouched up because there's a couple cats in there that are no longer there. But hey, hey most of them aren't there anymore. <laughs> it's just you, you, Rachel, and, and Danny. It's me and Rachel and Brian. Brian. Everybody else Brian. is gone. And then this oh, is the uh, back. Yeah. We're doing that right. Well, there's your license plate. Everybody see that? Make sure you stop and ask for an autograph and a complimentary CBD. Kelly oh, says great. they're free. I didn't think about that. No, I don't think. Uh, well, I mean, you see the bus. Nice and shady, at least where I'm at. And then I've got the shed here that I put all my costumes and and that I'm unloading still. Wow. I'm still working on this. Wow. These Look are my. That. These are a lot of my wigs I like to wear for. Yeah. Stage. Look at that. La, 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 la. That is awesome, Chris. Have you ever uh, met the wig master? And this is my... What's that? You ever met the wig master? Have I become the wig master? You ever I met him? Fun. No, the wig the master. Wig the master? guy that, um, from Seinfeld. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Not yet. But I do love wigs. They're fun. Mm -hmm. And then where I'm staying, there's all these kitty cats everywhere, and I I try not to feed them, but I love animals so much that I ended up feeding them, and buying them tuna, and now I can't get rid of them. They're always. Wow. Do you have any cats or any pets uh, with you on the bus, or is it just you? No, I'm going to be traveling a lot, so um, yeah. I just think it's best right now that I just. Uh, you know, I don't want to burden anyone with, you know, the, the obligation when I have to leave and go on the road. And or you I mean, to be want... honest with everything I've been through yeah. and some people understand this, others won't. But my kids are pretty much grown and um, and I, it's just me time now. I've been through so a lot mm -hmm. emotionally, um, mentally. uh and it's been hard recovering from all that. So it's not well, for me. You now. look you look healthy. You're taking care of yourself, Chris. I mean, because you have been through a lot. Like I know some of the inside stuff, which obviously I'm not going to divulge, but I mean, no, you look like you're taking care of yourself. It's a struggle, but uh, you're getting through. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, you know what? I've always been strong, but sometimes you just get tested where you think is shit, this is beyond my limit. Like I cannot handle this and then somewhere deep inside the strength comes out of you. you're like holy shit who is that you know yeah. and and i would have to say that um i have no regrets uh, i believe that i'm a being here having a learning experience as a human mm -hmm. and um that's what i'm here to do i'm here to learn and to grow and to experience and sometimes if you really want to grow, it's not on the mountaintops, it's in the valleys. And when you have the right perspective, you can go through those valleys. And instead of going, ah, I don't want to be here, this sucks. Ah, you can stop and go, all right, the shit is what it is. What yeah. can I learn from it? And how can I get out of it and become a better person for it? And I really believe that's what I did. And um, I do feel unstoppable. I do feel powerful. I do feel um, independent. And, you know, I, I now let the people in my life that prove themselves to me. I don't just have a, a swinging door going, everybody just come in. Then I'll, you know, find out if you're true or not. And then I'll push you out. Not anymore. It's like my circle is tighter, okay. as watertight as a frog's asshole. I mean, right. ain't, ain't nobody getting in the circle unless I know for certain that they're a good person. So it taught me a lot about not being so naive and gullible. I love without a fault. I just love people. I love, 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 love. And I see the good and I don't always see 
the bad or the red flags, if you will. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's been a learning experience and I always rise. This hasn't been my first rodeo mm -hmm. and uh, I just keep getting stronger and stronger and I feel unstoppable. Wow. Uh, so you guys have a practice tonight or practice. You have a, you have rehearsals today. We do. And we actually uh, have decided as a band that we are going to, um, we've got, a, we've got a few guys. Um, we have Adam Messler. He's our photographer. He's really, really great. Patrick Scott, also another one of our photographers, Brett Hall. He's a great videographer. And these people rally around us and they really help us a lot. But tonight, um, our our rapper Indica Indicut, his manager Jay is part of our family too, and he is a little uh, social media dude. Like he comes in rehearsals and films us rehearsing, and and he's gonna be on the bus with us while we're traveling rehearsing. And he's like, "What do you want me not to post? Because we're talking about TikTok, we're talking about Instagram." Right. And he's like, "What do you want me to post? What you don't want me to post?" And we're all like, "We want you to post." And he goes, what do you mean everything? And we're like, everything. Like, I don't care. Like, if I'm, you know, running to the bathroom and someone accidentally opens the door on me while I'm peeing, get that shit. I'm like, this is what it's all about. This is what people really want to see. Nobody really wants to see all the, the I'm pretty glamorous. Sure that, I'm pretty sure people, most of my audience are male, Chris, so pretty sure you're on to something with that one. And I think a lot of guys would like to see that. I can't believe I just said that. I know that's right. I would not imagine why anybody would want to watch someone pee. I see guys pee outside all the time. I'm like, eh, they're peeing. Actually, I was. I knew, I'm not um, throwing names out, but I interviewed Don Dawkin recently. You know Don. Um, oh, yeah. So he, he lives in he lives in New Mexico now. But he said when he was in Arizona and California, he says everybody was like pissing and shitting all over the side of the streets. It's, he says it's getting really bad. Is it is it bad in Phoenix right now? We have a law here. If they catch you peeing on the side of the road or whatever, you'll get a two hundred dollar fine. Yep. Hmm. True story. I don't know why. I mean, I think it's kind of ridiculous. It's not as long as you're not pulling it out in front of a bunch of kids. I mean, as long as you're remote. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's not lose Chris again. I can hear you. You're such a little tease. God, I'm what so are you sorry. doing? It's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm bugging you. Well, next time we do an interview, tell me to charge my fucking phone all the way. That was <laughs> you so, know, I get it. Yeah, like no, no, it's not a big deal. I it, totally get it. So I just wanted you back for a, so we can cut out and I'll edit this thing. Your, your living arrangements and anyways, I'm just going to start with this. All right, we're back. We've got Chris the seven remember remember that seven remember seven from seinfeld that first seven joke? and soda yeah seven and soda so we got seven and soda back um she's having some difficulties with her internet so that's why it keeps dropping off so um i'm sure oh i know what we're talking about a lot of the guys want to know um what about your love life chris well like i said i'm uh going through a divorce and um it took a toll on me and I um, definitely am staying single for, I would love to say forever, but you never know, but I'm not looking for anything right now. No. Good. I mean, I've, uh, there's that Queensryche song you were talking about. Um, Chris, I don't believe in love. <laughs> That's kind of my mantra, oh, right? I love that song from uh, Operation Mindcrime. I, I know that whole album by Me heart, too. every single word. You know what? I learned the phrase concept album from that album. I didn't know what it could, well, I mean, I didn't even know if they were big back in the 80s, but that is one hell of a concept album. I mean, mm -hmm. like a rock opera. It's amazing. It is. And actually, I just talked to Jeff Tate. He wrote that in Canada. I love it. You can I just say, I love you, Jeff. You love Jeff Tate? And I love your wife and your kids too, because you're a family man, and I know that, and I respect that. But you are such a badass. All yeah, of those Tate. guys are. Yeah. No, he's on tour right now with um one of my favorite guitar players, uh Vandenberg, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. from White from uh White Snake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. He's he's funny as fuck too. So you got to check out uh, some of the interviews I've done with him. But um, we got you back now. I don't want to let anything go before uh, your phone kicks out again. You got a big rehearsal again I tonight. I got it plugged in. We're good. We're good. Okay. So um, Hollywood Gods and Monsters, uh, same website as it was originally, correct? Yes. Yes, but we're cleaning it up. It still looks old. We're simplifying it. Um, you kind of go on there. It's way too busy, too much going on. We're simplifying it. Um, a lot of changes are being made, so it's under construction. Okay. But you can still listen to five of our songs on there. Right. And then you guys have a Facebook page and all that. Yes, we do. Hollywood. We have a Hollywood Gods and, for the love of Hollywood Gods and Monsters. Heather Thompson, um, she's our fan yes, club girl. Big fan, yeah. Yeah, she's a big fan. She she does a lot for Still Panther as well. Yeah. yeah. For the love of Hollywood Gods and Monsters. Okay, I'll put a link down below. I actually removed myself from Facebook because it was getting too much. Uh, I wasn't getting anything. It was just I just decided to get rid of it. Facebook, Twitter, and fucking Instagram. To me, anyways, it was just for me. So you're trying kind of, to say what everybody's saying and Facebook's for old people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, Facebook's not the same as it was when, we, well, I'm a bit older than you, but when it first started out, it was good for connecting, but now it, it's totally advertisement after advertisement after it controversy. Is. So you po if you uh, post something about uh, COVID? bikini underwear, you'll get every ad in the world for bikini underwear. Um, really? So... You don't say. I wish they bring back MySpace. I'm, I loved MySpace. There, I, I wish I could remember the joke. There was a hilarious, it was kind of a dirty joke about MySpace and Facebook. It was, I, I wish I can, oh, it's one of those things where you're always thinking every year after year, you're thinking, I, I wish I got, I got to figure this one out. But yeah, my, actually, who was I talking to that said they still have a MySpace account? And they were kind of embarrassed. Who in the fuck was it? Oh, I, I can't even I think was, remember Howie Simon. my sign in, huh? Howie Simon, he's a great guitar player. He's played with uh, Eric Martin and all those guys. And he, I looked at his website and I'm like, you want me to mention your website? He goes, no way, man. He goes, it looks like a MySpace account. So I just, I miss how you could put your own music on your page. Like it was very music oriented. Yeah. And, um, and I always had a She Sells Sanctuary by the Cult playing on mine yeah one of my favorites um what's her name colby calais she got famous from her myspace account oh, okay i like her yeah yeah she's, she's really good yep she's really good and she sings too just kidding <laughs> you're funny i try Any, anyways um what's the opposite of unsubscribe chris subscribe wow you are a good singer <laughs> Okay, everybody do is everybody do is seven seven from HGNMS Hollywood Hollywood, Hollywood Gods, Gods and Monsters. Monsters says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. Um, I'll put all the links below to go down there and get your merch and everything. Anybody's in the Arizona Phoenix area, well, you saw the license plate, so just go check out Chris wherever she's parked. Just kidding. Hey, I'm a friendly girl. But remember, I do carry a gun for you freako psych psychos out there. Um, what I wanted to say is, old school or not, you can find me on Facebook under Chris, K-R-I-S, Aragon, A-R-A-G-O-N, Phoenix, Arizona. Add me as a friend. I would love to have you as a friend. That's awesome. Well, thanks for your for the time, Chris, and the update. And glad to see that um, everything is going good. And um Lots of good stuff coming from you and the band in the coming uh, days, months, years, and decades. Love you, Ernest. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Bye-bye.